Some truths are stranger than fiction, and there is still debate about whether this New York legend is actually true. However, some paranormal historians have confirmed its authenticity as recently as the year 2000, citing police records and witness accounts passed down. The story highlights a bizarre haunting which resulted in a revenge phantom slaying. It is said that police have never solved this most unexplained homicide in criminal history because the perpetrator was a deceased woman. The origin of the crime goes back to the 1870s and involves a frequent traveller called Miss Ada Danforth and her small ward called Fanchon Moncair. The pair regularly cruised between France and New York, with Danforth explaining to anyone who asked that Fanchon was an orphan whose parents had died in a fire. The story went that on her 18th birthday she would inherit a fortune, but in the meantime Danforth was her governess and legal guardian. The pair were, in actual fact, one of many gangs of international jewel thieves operating on ships sailing between New York and the European mainland, and probably the most accomplished due to their stunning disguise. Moncair was a short-statured person, a woman in her forties who had been born with dwarfism. She was no taller or more obviously developed than a six-year-old and looked no older than one either. Born as Stel Ridley, she had adopted the name Fanchon Moncair for her criminal enterprises. Ridley would curtsy adorably to any inquiring passenger and skip along carrying her doll. With her cherubic smiles, she would charm wealthy passengers on board the liners into disclosing where they kept their jewellery. Danforth would then sneak into their staterooms when they were not present and steal the baubles, which Ridley would hide in the doll she always carried. Her doll had a removable china head and a hollow body cavity. No customs officer would dream of challenging the sweet little girl as she skipped through the gates, bearing the stolen jewels in her toy. From there, the pair would hasten to Manhattan's Chinatown in order to unscrew the head of the doll and fence their booty. In the privacy of their ship's stateroom, and then the rough and tumble of illicit dealing, Ridley's child masquerade was quickly dropped. Having spent 43 years in a harsh life as a circus sideshow, she drank and cursed like a sailor, smoked cigars, and reportedly lived fast and loose. She also drove ferociously hard bargains, which left the fencers who resold the jewels with a very small percentage of the proceeds. She and Danforth would spend months at a time on the continent, resulting in huge hauls of precious gemstones and pearls. Their most audacious score reaped a quarter of a million dollars worth of gold, silver and precious stones, all snaffled through customs stored in the body of the porcelain doll. Their smuggling business could have continued for years had they not taken on an accomplice, a young woman named Magda Hamilton. Some accounts indicate that Magda actually replaced Danforth as Ridley's governess, while others describe her as a rival racketeer. It was also claimed that she and Danforth were competing for the affections of a high-stakes gambler called Dartney Crawley. A major falling out occurred when Hamilton became angry because Ridley, having initially promised a 50-50 cut in a theft from a Chicago businessman, gave her only a third of their profits. Ridley had argued that she herself did the bulk of the grifting work and should get a larger share of the proceeds. Whatever the cause, Hamilton violated all underworld taboos by going to the police as an informer. The next time the partners in crime docked in New York, little Ridley's doll was inspected and she and Danforth were dispatched to Manhattan's notorious Tombs Prison. Ridley, who apparently already had a significant criminal record, was eventually sentenced to life imprisonment, while Danforth, who was 10 years younger, was jailed as an accessory for 20 years. Hamilton was to serve only a short stint and the tension was evident during the dramatic trial hearing. Watching the gloating Hamilton sitting in the packed courtroom, Ridley sprang to her feet and screamed that she would one day have her lethal revenge on her betrayer, from the grave if necessary. Hamilton served her time and, triumphantly on her release, married Dartney Crawley. 
Six months later, he had left her to try his luck in a California mining venture. However, the generous divorce settlement left her very well off in her Staten Island mansion, which some records say had previously been owned by Ridley. Hamilton's prosperity grew through shrewd investments and she became a well-known figure in New York cafe society. Some years passed until very early one morning she awoke from a heavy sleep and was shocked to find Ridley at the foot of her bed. Again dressed in frilly finery like a child, the small woman was clutching a big china doll. However, now toothless and emaciated, her grinning face showed her years of suffering. In a panic, Hamilton escaped her by dashing into the bathroom where she locked herself in for the rest of the night. Angrily, she reported the incident to the police the following morning, viciously cursing them for not informing her that Ridley had escaped and demanding police protection. A bemused police sergeant, producing a week-old copy of the New York Sun, indicated a short news item on the back page. It was only then that Hamilton discovered that Ridley had taken her own life in her prison cell some time ago. That same afternoon, Hamilton booked herself a cabin on board a Cunard liner heading for Europe, scheduled to depart the very next day. She shared a farewell dinner with a friend and then went home. However, on the morning of her planned trip, her servants found her neatly packed trunks next to her as Hamilton lay semi-naked and deceased on her bed. Her jaw was locked open, her eyes bulging in extreme terror and there was congealed blood at the corners of her mouth. A medical examiner concluded that she had suffocated, drowning in her own blood as a result of having a heavy object rammed into her mouth. The weapon was never to be found, however there was a clue of sorts. Investigators were mystified by their finding in Hamilton's mouth of clumps of hairs from the head of a child's china doll. According to researcher Dennis William Hawke, the Crawley House is still haunted to this day, not by the hapless Hamilton, but by the diminutive ghost of Fanchon Moncare, aka Estelle Ridley. As the mansion was perhaps originally owned by her, the Phantom seems to have again taken possession of the property as being rightly hers. Ridley has been seen by witnesses both inside the old house and on the widow's walk on the roof.